Chapter thirty eight of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter thirty eight The High Priest Called of God. Hebrews chapter five, verses four to six. And no man taketh the honour unto himself but when he is called of God, even as was Aaron. So Christ also glorified not himself to be made a high priest. But he that spake unto him, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest for ever, after the order of Melchizedek. A priest sustains a twofold relationship, to God and to man. Every high priest is appointed for men in things pertaining to God. We have just seen what the great characteristic is of his relation to men. He must himself be a man, like them, and one with them, with a heart full of gentleness and sympathy for the very weakest. In his relation to God, our epistle now proceeds to say, the chief requirement is that he should have his appointment from God. He must not take the honour to himself. He must be called of God. All this proved to be true of Jesus. The truth that Jesus had his appointment from God was not only of importance to the Hebrews to convince them of the divine and supreme right of Christianity, it is of equal interest to us to give us an insight into that which constitutes the real glory and power of our religion. Our faith needs to be fed and strengthened, and this can only be as we enter more deeply into the divine origin and nature of redemption. No man taketh the honour unto himself, but when he is called of God. It is God against whom we have sinned, in separation from whom we are fallen into the power of death. It is God we need. It is to him and his love the way must be opened. It is God alone who can say what that way is, who is able to have it opened up. And this now is what gives the gospel and our faith in Christ its security and sufficiency, that it is all of God. Christ has been called of God to be high priest. The very God who created us, against whom we sinned, gives his Son as our Redeemer. So Christ also glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that spake unto him, Thou art my Son, this day I have begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest for ever, after the order of Melchizedek. Here it is not merely the fact that Christ was called of God to be high priest, but the ground upon which he was chosen, that we must specially notice. The two passages quoted teach us that it was as Son of God that he was appointed high priest. This opens up to us the true nature and character of the priesthood. It shows us that the priesthood is rooted in the sonship. The work of the priesthood is to reveal and communicate the blessed life of sonship. As Son, Christ alone was heir of all that God had. All the life of the Father was in him. God could have no union or fellowship with any creature but through his beloved Son, or as far as the life and spirit and image of the Son were seen in it. Therefore no one could be our High Priest but the Son of God. If our salvation was not to be a merely legal one, external and, I may say, artificial, but an entrance anew into the very life of God with the restoration of the divine nature we had lost in paradise, it was the Son of God alone who could impart this to us. He had the life of God to give. He was able to give it. He could only give it by taking us into living fellowship with himself. The priesthood of Christ is the God-devised channel through which the ever-blessed Son could make us partakers of himself, and with himself of all the life and glory he hath from and in the Father. And this now is our confidence and safety, that it was the Father who appointed the Son High Priest. It is the love of God against whom we had sinned that gave the Son. It is the will and the power of this God that ordained and worked out the great salvation. It is in God himself our salvation has its origin, its life, its power. It is God drawing nigh to communicate himself to us in his Son. Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. It was God gave him this glory. 
Just think what this means. God counts it an honour for his Son to be the priest of poor sinners. Jesus gave up his everlasting glory for the sake of this new, which he now counts his highest, glory, the honour of leading guilty men to God. Every cry of a penitent for mercy, every prayer of a ransomed soul for more grace and nearer access to God, he counts these his highest honour, the proofs of a glory he has received from his Father above the glory of sonship, or rather the opening up of the fullness of glory which his sonship contained. O thou doubting, troubled soul! Wilt thou not now believe this, that Jesus counts it his highest honour to do his work in any needy one that turns to him? The Son of God, in his glory, counts his priesthood his highest glory, as the power of making us partake as brethren with him in the life and love of the Father. Do let Jesus now become thy confidence. Be assured that nothing delights Jesus more than to do his work. Do thou what God hath done. Glorify him as thy high priest, and as thou learnest to turn from thyself and all human help, to trust the Son of God, he will prove to thee what a great high priest he is. He will, as Son, lead thee into the life and love of the Father. Could God have bestowed a more wondrous grace upon us than this, to give his own Son as our High Priest? Could he have given us a surer ground of faith and hope than this, that the Son is Priest? And shall we not trust him, and give him the honour God has given him? What is needed is that we occupy and exercise our faith in appropriating this blessed truth. Jesus is the Eternal Son, appointed by the Father as our priest to introduce us into his presence and to keep us there. He was himself so compassed with weaknesses and tried with temptations that no ignorance or weakness on our part can weary him or prevent him doing his blessed work if we will only trust him. O oh, let us worship and honour him. Let us trust him. Let our faith claim all he is able and willing to do, our God-appointed High Priest. Faith opens the heart. Through faith this divine being fills, pervades the whole heart, dwells in it. He cannot bring thee nigh to God except as he brings thy heart nigh. He cannot bring thy heart nigh except as he dwells in it. He cannot dwell in it except as thou believest. O oh, consider Jesus until thy whole heart is faith in him and what he is in thee. End of chapter 38